ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶುದ್ಧಸ್ಫಟಿಗ ಸಂಕಾಶಂ ಶುದ್ಧ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಶುದ್ಧ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದಾಶಿವಹಂ ಶ್ರೇಯೇ ಶಂಖಾರೂಪೇಣ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತ ಪಂಕೀಕೃತಮೋದ್ಯಯ ಕಂ ಕರೀಯ ಸಾಮಾಯ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಾಶ್ರೇ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಭಾರತೀ ಕರುಣಾಪಾತ್ರ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಭೂಷಣ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಮಾರೂಢ ಭಾರತೀ ತೀರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿನಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ವೀತರಾಗಂ ವಿವೇಕಿನ ವಂದೇ ವೇದಾಂತ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞ ವಿದುಶೇಖರ ಭಾರತೀ ಮಾಲಾ ಸುಧಾ ಕುಂಭ ವಿಭೋಧ ಮುದ್ರ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿರಾಜತ್ಕರ ವಾರಿಜಾತ ಅಪಾರ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ಸುಧಾಂಬುರಾಶಿ ಶ್ರೀಶಾರದಾಂಬಾಂ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಟುಡೆ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಕೀ ದೃಶಿ what is the meaning of shraddha for which the guru answers guru vedanta vakya dishu vishwasaha shraddha shraddha means faith vishwasaha trust faith in what guru shastra vakyeshu guru vedanta shastra vakyeshu Guru means spiritual teacher. We have already seen. The one who dispels the internal darkness called Ajnanam, self-ignorance, by lighting up the lamp of Jnanam, self-knowledge, in the minds of disciples. He is Guru. Guru means Gu, means darkness. Ru means remover. the person who removes darkness from the minds of people vedanta says that all our emotional issues and problems are because of self ignorance emotional problems are called samsara according to vedanta samsara disease is caused by bacteria called self ignorance if you want to cure the disease by destroying the disease that is bhava roga is the disease bhava roga means what it is self ignorance so if you have to destroy the bhava roga you have to approach a doctor who is well versed in this field who is knowledgeable about the disease and then he will remove the bacteria by giving appropriate antibiotic antidote called self knowledge self knowledge is atma gnanam that is the only medicine for removing the samsara roga therefore you are undergoing a therapy or a treatment to cure bhava roga samsara disease shastra says whenever you undergo a treatment one of the most important factors is to have faith in the doctor and the method adopted by the doctor to cure the disease even the modern medical system accepts the fact if your patient does not have trust or faith in the doctor even the best medicine cannot will not cure the disease and also they say if the patient has full faith in the doctor then even if the doctor administers a dummy medicine just to psychologically satisfy the patient by giving some colored water injection just for uh, name sake i am telling it will cure the disease therefore faith plays a major role in any therapy and spiritual sadhana is also a form of treatment we undergo to get out of samsara disease therefore the first thing is to develop 
have faith in the doctor and also the treatment, the system of treatment given by the doctor. Nowadays, there are so many systems of medical fields available, allopathy, homeopathy, naturopathy and all those pathies are available. And each one says the other system is not useful, it is useless, that is what they say. Within, within one field, no two doctors will agree. There is a joke, you know, a patient went to a doctor and he said, Doctor, I went to the other doctor who is practicing in the next street. They are, both of them are competitors for consultation. Then this doctor asked the patient, Oh, you went to that doctor. What foolish advice did he give you? The patient said, He asked me to go and consult with you for further treatment. So, you know, this is a joke about two doctors always complaining about the other's treatment. So, no two doctors will agree on the treatment. See, one doctor may suggest chemotherapy is the solution for the problem. If you go to another doctor for uh, another opinion, he will say, no, chemotherapy will not work, surgery alone will work. If you go to Ayurveda doctor, he will say, no, no, nothing will work. You forget about all those things. I will give you one simple kashayam. You consume that kashayam for three days, three times a day and everything will go. Now, this patient is already having a problem. Now, he is confused what to do, which doctor to go and which type of medication he should take. So, what should we do? We have left, left with no option. Have faith in a particular system. Have faith in a doctor. And also, the, uh, the medicine which is going to be given by the doctor. And surrender to Lord Vaidhyanatha and go ahead. If this is true for physical, a uh, local disease, it is true for spiritual disease also. Choose a proper guru who is equal to a doctor and his system is what Vedanta Shastram, that is what he will be practicing. Have faith in the guru and Vedanta Shastram and go ahead with your spiritual journey. Now, how to develop faith, Shraddha or trust? How to do that? Faith is the trust which is the validity of the spiritual teachings. That is, you must have trust in the validity of our scriptural teaching. We develop faith in anything by worshipping it. I can worship something if I have faith in it. I will have faith only if I worship. Faith can be developed only by worship. Now, we are caught in two mutual dependent situation. What is the way out? We try to find a solution by mechanically worshipping, even if we don't have faith in the initial stages. That is why we are asked to do worship in childhood days before we learn to question. In the childhood days itself, our parents will tell, worship Bhagavan, do Namaskara, tell slokams, Vishnu Sahasranamam, Lalita Sahasranamam, do Veda Parayanam and all those things they will say. Now, worshipping is of, worship is of two types. One is mental worship, the other one is physical worship. When you are a child, mental worship will not work because your mind is not mature enough. Therefore, you have to develop physical worship, going to a temple, doing Sashtanga Namaskara and chanting Parayanam, chanting Slokams, etc. So, this is one of the methods in which the child slowly develops faith. First, it worships Bhagavan, worships Mahatmas, 
worship our scriptures and later on when the child grows big when the mind also slowly gets matured he will start asking questions for which he will find suitable answers also by developing shraddha so slowly only the trust will develop so that's why when people ask why should i you know like uh, i will wait until i learn the meanings of sandhya vandana mantra then i will start doing sandhya vandana it is like uh, taking dip in ocean after all the waves will stop it is not possible ala onj samudra snanam panina madri appdin solluva so the waves are not going to die they always keep coming so when will we go and take a dip in the ocean it is not going to happen in our lifetime therefore the simple advice is when you are a child you start doing sandhya vandanam without any questioning and later on slowly the faith will develop you start asking questions you also learn the meanings then you can link the meanings with the mantras and what whatever the other veda mantras you learn you can correlate one with another so this is the best, best method by which one can develop shraddha trust or vishwasa then the next one is ah uh, then then i said you know like you have to go to a guru for gnana yoga for shravanam mananam and nididhyasanam so how to choose a guru now there are a lot of people who claim that i am a guru now we are once again confused who will be the right guru a guru must be a person who has been taught vedanta shastram by his guru he should have come in the proper lineage of guru shishya parampara he is very much conversant with the scriptures he teaches in accordance with the scriptures he does not propagate any self discovered path this is very important whatever the teachings he gives it has to be from the scriptures he can quote the modern day examples to make students understand the concept but he cannot have self discovered facts self discovered path and all those he is a master of his mind and senses he is dispassionate whose contact is spotless who is clearly interested in the welfare of the student and he does not expect anything in return from the disciple these are the lakshana of a guru in short he must be a shrotriya brahmanishta guru this is also a very important factor then the last sixth and final virtue is samadhanam kim this is a student asks what do you mean by samadhanam for which the teacher says chittai kagrata chitta ekagrata is samadhanam samadhanam means focusing capacity of the mind concentration or concentration span attention or attention span is samadhanam first of all we should be very clear as to what is our goal what do i want in my life what is my goal if you ask people many of us do not know what is their goal at all people will say this that they will say no no this is not the goal the other one is my goal they will get confused if you ask further question they will say they followed what the parents told them to do or what the other peers did i studied lkg ukg school college got into some job etc why because others did it so i just follow the path it is a mechanical flow we are not clear about our goals goals must be short term and long term it should be thoughtfully decided once i decide the goals should be there all the time in my mind for which i have to develop concentration concentration also similar to goals short term and long term 
so we mean what do you mean by short term concentration short term focusing mean freedom from distraction that is when i listen to scriptural teaching i should be able i should be able to keep my mind focused on the class on the teaching for about 30 minutes 45 minutes or 60 minutes minimum without any distraction for different people the duration of concentration will be different if you see a child he may be playing with a toy for a minute not more than a minute he will throw away the toy and look out for another toy he needs changes frequently some of the elders adults cannot watch one tv program continuously for more than 2 minutes they keep on switching the channels one after the other which is called channel surfing nowadays due to cell phone habit people say they are not able to concentrate on any particular subject for more than 10 minutes maximum is 10 minutes duration this is called attention deficiency syndrome due to our lifestyle our attention span is coming down which will not help anybody in any field even for a materialistic uh, goal to be achieved even for sports tennis or cricket or anything you need tremendous concentration focusing capability supposing when you play cricket you know you face a fast bowler if you lose the concentration for a fraction of a second when he delivers the ball at a good speed then you know you the moment you turn around your stump is gone you will be lucky if only the stump is gone supposing the ball hits you in your head or in some other shoulders or you get injured you fall down and go to hospital so the concentration or focusing capability is very very essential for any walk of life and more so for spiritual journey the second thing is long term focusing we saw what is short term focusing long term focusing is also as as important as short term one in and through your various activities you should not lose a sight of ultimate goal of your life which is moksha purushartham we saw chaturvida purushartham the final one is moksham that is shreyas which should be at the back of the mind all the time this is like a long train journey suppose i am going from chennai to new delhi it will take one and a half days or two days maximum nowadays the with the increase in train speed and all this maybe one and a half days it will take in between there may be many stations coming i may be getting down have some coffee or tea and then i don't lose my attention that i have to go to delhi i have to go back to the train so this type of keeping the long term goal in the mind the destination in the mind even while are doing some short term jobs here and there is called long term concentration you should not lose sight of your goal i may raise a family i may go to a go to job i may earn money i may go abroad i may buy house houses i may buy cars all those things are all fine it is all okay good but the back of your mind you must always remember that moksham is your final destination so whatever you have to do you do so many things but finally you have to concentrate on reaching the final destination in other words i should die with full fulfillment total fulfillment without lacking anything purna purushah according to scriptures a person who discovers fullness that is purnatvam in himself before dying is true brahmana a brahmana a true brahmana is one who understands that he is brahman and he claims that he is brahman without an iota of doubt even while living he is called brahmana a person who does not discover the purnatvam in himself before dying he has to be pitied because he has wasted this wonderful life given by ishwara 
therefore constantly i should remember the very important uh, shloka given in our scriptures it says mahata punya panyena kriteyam kayanau stvaya that means what you have bought this body which is called boat which is equivalent to a boat from bhagavan it is not free there is no free lunch nothing is free in this world you have exchanged money for that what is money here punyam not one or two mahata punyena lot of punyam as cash you have exchanged with bhagavan to get this manushya shariram therefore param dukho dadher gantum means what it has to be used for crossing the samsara ocean before the boat disintegrates tara yavanna bidyate tara yavanna bidyate that is you have to cross the ocean of samsara before the boat that is the body disintegrates before you die you have to discover your true real nature this goal must be at the back of mind all the time this is known as samadhanam all types of meditations japa satsanga puja everything meant for this long term and short term concentration only this is about samadhanam with this we have completed six fold inner discipline samadhi shatka sampatti we have already seen i'll just go through in brief what are the six because we have seen in one or two classes first is shamaha control of my mind mental discipline mind is inner sense organ antakaranam damaha second is control over my bahyendriyam that is external sense organs we should remember control does not means does not mean suppression our scriptures do not accept suppression in any form we have to be very clear about that then what do you mean by control of mind control of indriyams that is sense organs means we have to regulate we have to channelize the mind and sense organs to take the advantage of reaching the moksha purushartham third one is uparamaha quietude retaining the peace of mind which is obtained by shamaha then fourth one is titiksha increasing the tolerance limit shraddha just now we saw vishwasah that is trust or faith in scriptures gurus and shastra vakyam samadhanam increasing the focusing capability of the mind increasing the attention span of the mind these are the six internal disciplines all the six can be obtained can be increased by following upasana yoga meditation we have seen sometime back we have seen upasana yoga is very essential so this karma yoga and upasana yoga together will help us in getting sadhana chatushtaya sampanna now sampatti so we have to see the last one is mumukshutvam which we will see in the next class with this i will conclude this session purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate om shanti 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 hari hi om